Hey everybody, another history mystery. Who do you think should have been the king of, 10, of 1066 England? Now, let me just kind of run through the quick political situation. So, in 1066, uh, a lot of intense stuff happened, all right? So, that was famously the contention of three kings, one of them a Viking warlord who loved beer and wanted to conquer everything from the Mediterranean coastline to northern England and the Scottish Isles, known as Harold Hadrada. There is also uh, Harold Godwinson, who was the Earl of Essex, and he, quote-unquote, was claimed as king by the Edward the Confessor's deathbed. And then there is also the Duke of Normandy, William the Conqueror, so call it because he conquered, you know, <laughs> which is pretty obvious. And there's actually even another guy nobody even talks about, Edward a Edgar Aethling, uh, who was, uh, a, who his, along with his dad, literally named Edward the Exile. So, you know, how much they love that guy. And they were in Hungary when this happened, most of this stuff went down. So anyway, I'll go through each one's legal case. So first one, uh, Harold Godwinson. So he was the Earl of Essex, uh, Vessex when this was going on, and he was the only real Anglo-Saxon uh, claimant with that much strength. The problem was there was a lot of crap that was going on. Like, he was made king, but he was the only person in the room. He hated, well, he didn't hate, it was more like he would screw over his brother Tostig, who was actually uh, supposed to be the Earl of Northumbria, but then two other guys uh, muscled him out, and he was actually kicked out of Northumbria, and he even went on to marry a relative of these two people that screwed over his brother so his brother actually famously went over to join Harold Tadrada and bring Harold Tadrada over to conquer England and yeah so that's pretty uh this guy's a bit scummy you know and no one really liked Harold Godwinson and it kind of is in line with this character that he would do scummy things so that's Harold Godwinson the second claimant is Harald Tadrada. So he succeeded Magnus I of Norway in 1046, and as such, he's been king of Norway for about 20 years. So he claims that he was promised the kingship, and, well, it's kind of weird. You know, he tried to take over Denmark a couple of years earlier. It didn't really work out that well. Uh, and he was just kind of thinking along the lines that, oh, well, Canute the Great uh, four decades earlier was king. So maybe if I take over this location and I use Tostig Godvinson, then I'll be able to take over the English crown for myself. So it was not really him thinking of this larger project. It was much more, there was an opportunity that propelled himself and he thought, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to invade England. And he thought, why not? So it didn't go well for him, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, uh, c'est la vie. Now, that's Harold Hadrada. Now, there's William the Conqueror. And what happened was there's a lot of claims that he was saying that he was promised the crown by Edward the Confessor while he was in Normandy. And he was saying that he wanted to take over the crown. He also claimed that uh, Harold Godwinson made a trip to Normandy as well. And he promised him the English throne if it was to happen, even though uh, he... Um, the Harold Godwinson was actually the most strongest uh, lord in England. And to be fair, like, here's the thing. It's not really much of a promise if you're holding the guy at sword point, you know? So, what do you want to do? And um, But legally speaking, William actually was able to uh, uh, secure papal dispensation to actually get pardoned if he was to invade England and take it over. And, well, you know how it is. Like, the <laughs> this is during the investiture controversy, which was uh, happening hardly a decade beforehand. And, you know, it was the church was corrupt, you know? So it was not really saying much that some guy sitting in Italy who was, quote-unquote, the Holy Father, was actually going to help that much, I guess, in changing people's minds. But anyway, he got that claim. So... And this last guy, uh, Edgar Aethling, who is the son of Edward the Exile, uh, was, you know, he was the great, he was the grand nephew of the king that passed away, Edward the Confessor, and he was a, the closest blood relative. But as we've seen beforehand in the, um, let's say, ex for example, in the Last Kingdom, there was no real patrilineal uh, kingship. It was much more done by Witten, it was done by committee, so you'd be elected as king. And... 
So it doesn't, didn't matter if you were the closest blood relative. Uh, you know, it, as seen with Alfred the Great, he was elected over his brother's son uh, to actually become king. And uh, they still remained family, mem family uh, members of the royal family, but they weren't king. So Edgar Aethling, I think, is out, to be certain, even though he was a claimant, but a very minor one. And Harald Hadrada was much more of an impulsive gesture, so, you know, he legally... Uh, he may have been able to do it, like, if he had Tostig to back him up, but not really. Uh, the thing with Harold Godwinson, even though he was kind of suspect, he was probably had the strongest legal claim